Okay, uh, we're going to do a little uh, video on how we do uh, our uh, refrigerator smokers. Uh, this is Andy. He'll show, walk you through how uh, he's building this one. Uh, first thing you got to do is find yourself an old refrigerator. Uh, something that's metal lined on the inside uh, works well. Uh, this one has a uh, porcelain metal uh, inside. Uh, what we did, uh, removed uh, all the plastic that was on there. There was plastic on the door. We removed that and we put a sheet of stainless on here. Uh, you don't have to have stainless. A, a regular sheet of 13 gauge steel would work well. So with that, I'll have Andy tell you uh, how we going to uh, vent this and uh, go through the steps on that. So here's Andy. Okay. Andy? Okay. Yeah, uh, what we did on the last refrigerator was a little bit smaller in size, but what we're doing is we're running a twin exhaust on it. So the first thing you want to determine is how much room you have in here from the ceiling down because you know there's going to be probably about four inch space so you want to figure to measure down to find your center and if you come over here what we did was we we found our center of the refrigerator and we determined what the inside ceiling height was and we we came down and made a mark then what we do is we normally like to use a this is a three and five eighths hole saw that works good for the type of exhaust pipes we're using. So pretty much what we're doing is we're finding our center. We're gonna line up our hole saw here like this. This is going to be the top of the hole, which would bring us just a little bit in below the ceiling height. That way you're not drilling it actually up into this cavity that's insulated. This is where your drill bit's gonna go through. So I, I marked this as my center. And then when I set up my hole saw to drill it, it's going to go right through like that. And what we did ahead of time was, where this is marked out, I marked my center. And then I took a drill with a very long drill bit on it. And I actually... Oh, you pre-drilled I pre-drilled my pilot hole and kept the drill level and went all the way through. So you have two holes actually because you, as you can see in here, there's a, there's a cavity that runs about three and a half inches. There's three and a half inches between the two pieces of metal which has the insulation in it. So you're basically gonna take your hole saw, slowly drill. As you break through the first piece of metal, you're gonna take the hole saw out, remove the piece of metal, clean the insulation out. You'll see where your second pilot hole is then you're going to basically drill drill it again to where you're going to be inside drilling and you're going to actually pop out on the inside of the refrigerator which if you kind of can swing around and get an inside picture you can see see how the hole saw is going to come through there okay and that's going to take care of us on both sides now why are we doing both sides well just we experimented and we figured we were going to try a lot of guys want to run one big hole up through the center we just wanted to see for equal distribution of the heat if we ran one on each side, if that's going to make the, the airflow better and, and release the heat a little more evenly than putting it through the center. Now, because this is a bigger refrigerator than the last one we did, we're also going to cut in some extra ventilation holes here, which we'll get to that in a minute. We have a, a hole cut on the back side that's going to have an adjustable vent and an option to put a fan on. If we get into the testing phase where we're just not getting it down to a low enough temperature, then what we'll probably do is we might add an additional third stack, which we would do the same thing we're doing here. We would drill that bigger hole and this would get mounted on the top. That way then you're totally covered on all your heat that's going up is evenly coming out of the unit. Okay. Um, now, now with the when you remove the plastic uh, on the edges there, what do you use to cover that up? Yeah, normally when we take that out, this is like more like a resiny type fiberglass material. I usually, you can usually go to one, any of your home box stores and you can get like regular metal roof flashing. Anything that, that's a thinner gauge, easy to work with, you can make your pieces and actually slide them right in here. What I'll do here is I'll make these pieces, they'll slide up in here and I will use the lip of the flashing and I will drill and I will rivet these pieces and that way all of this is now metal and it's all protected so there's nothing where any sparks or anything can get in there to, to catch the unit on And then fire. you can put your gasket on there. I yeah, the gasket will 
probably work out to be right around here because the stock gasket was about here. So that stove type gasketing we're going to use, we're going to put a nice piece of it all the way around on here. It'll all be almost like the same application as when it was a refrigerator. Yeah. And we'll get a pretty nice seal. I mean, we don't want it airtight. It's not a submarine or anything. <laughs> but we just want a nice, nice, you know, closure on it to hold the heat in. And you will experience it with these old refrigerators as you use them more and more that you know you're, you have a lot of heat contained in here so the inner panels might actually swell up a little bit might contract a little bit so if there's a little bit of a gap it's not a big deal it's going to close itself up and as you use it more and more the metal is going to almost like condition itself to where it's going to expand and contract a little bit so now on the back the back of it you're going to we're going to put uh, some venting on the yeah, back we're going to add up venting in the back you got this is nice you got it on wheels there that's yep, that's a nice uh, Things. Now what we did here on the back, and you can get one of these anywhere, it's a normal floor vent that could be used for house furnace application. Okay. Now you're going to have the same amount of distance here as up there. There's going to be a three and a half inch cavity. So what we did was we found our center. We determined how big we wanted to cut this because we would like to utilize this so that it can actually be controlled. To open and close it if you want to let a little bit more air in no air in as you as you you know proceed with the project but we've actually made this to where this is basically going to fit in there nice just like that you're able to open and close it now what we're going to end up doing in here is we're going to actually cut some little pieces of metal to go in here to cover this insulation up and you can get by with just you know some pieces of aluminum uh, you can cut them a little tight and just basically push them down in there. It's just to, you know, keep it protected. Um, this is going to be more of, of a device to bring air into the unit. Um, so it's not going to it's not going to be a big thing here where you're going to have to worry about sparks coming in. So now, then you'll we're, we're going to drill some holes in, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. You can. Basically, what we're going to do now is to utilize this. If you close this on the back. What I've got here is a uh, two and an eighth inch hole saw. So it's, a, it's about the same as if this was open. So you figure you're gonna have, I'm gonna try to do five holes. So I'm basically gonna line up on the inside, if you can see that in there. And I'm gonna take the drill, and I'm gonna drill five holes, five cylindrical holes. That way your holes are inside the refrigerator. That way when you replace this, and it's in the open position, you'll be able to actually see inside of there. Now what we did on our other refrigerator build was we took a smaller um, fan that we were able to mount on here to give it a little extra push, you know, to suck some air in, blow it into there. Um, and, and not all applications I don't think are going to need that, no. but maybe the smaller ones I would think. That's but. just something we did on the smaller fridge because it was a way smaller fridge and it was just holding so much heat we wanted to give a, a little relief in there. We wanted to get a little air in there and help everything you know rise up and come out and hold a nice temperature. What we're going to do on this one is we're going to do the same procedure and we're going to test do our test runs and we're going to see how well um, you know, it holds the temperature, and, and if it doesn't get too hot, if it doesn't need the fan, we're not going to put it in. But if it is, we've already done one before, so it's not a big deal. We do sell the fans here. Simple application you can attach to the outside. It'll have a plug on it. Just plug it in. It'll push some air through into there, and it'll kind of help everything. Okay, so that's our basic setup. Uh on that, uh, we've got the hole already uh, made on this to accept the hopper assembly uh, that we're going to use to uh, to run this. Uh, we determined where that needed to go, and uh, we'll just slip that in, and then uh, we'll do another little video here in a, in a little bit, showing you that uh, when we finish it up uh, with our racks and how uh, we set up the the pellet feeder for this so we'll come back in a little bit uh, and show you the finished product hey everybody Andy from smokedaddyinc.com we're back with our second fridge that we've been working on and we got a lot of the finishing touches we want to show you and we're going to do a test fire on it today 
We got our hopper assembly all installed, our Pellet Pro hopper assembly, 18 inch. We got our side discharge stacks all put in and fire caulked. I'm gonna give you a shot of the inside here. What we ended up doing was, we took those plastic pieces off, and you can get this, it's regular drip edge, you can get at your local box store, Home Depot, Menards, and we utilized this cut to fit to cover those areas that would have had the plastic piece. That's why it pays to save the plastic pieces when you take them out. You can use them as a template. So that's all properly put in and riveted so that there's no problems with anything getting in or any combustibles. We also figured out our shelf brackets. What we did was we wanted to try to reuse the old racks. So what I did was I went with some one inch angle iron and I cut the pieces to fit. And then we made some little stoppers to hold the racks in place. So we're able to utilize the old racks for now. If they, you know, if, if, if we think we need to go more heavy duty later, we can always change them. But for right now, we're gonna try to use what we got. So we got two nice racks in. We also located our meat probe, or not our meat probe, but our temperature probe, which is sticking right through here. We're a little bit up below the bottom of the top rack. You don't want to go too low because then you're going to cause an interference when you put any meat or anything in there bumping the probe. So we have that in, in, in the proper location. We cut our vent in the back and we have our holes for our air intake. Um, if it turns out that it starts to run too hot, we will put an additional fan on the back to blow a little extra air into the unit to help get those lower temperatures and maintain those lower temperatures. Um, we got a heat shield that's going to go on here. We're running a three inch bracket. And then I'll show you what the heat shield looks like when we put it in place. What we did on this one is we made a little modification on the back because we don't want to block those holes. So we cut a little section of the heat shield out. And that's basically going to sit on there just like that. Now do you have to be center of the... Not necessarily. Uh, Based on the hoppers that we sell, the 12 inch would have put the burn pot way more this direction. So we wanted to get it as much over into the unit as possible. It's all indirect heat anyway. Yeah, so. yeah it's gonna, you know, it's gonna all fill up. So then we made another rack here just for a drip pan. Once again, using the one inch uh, angle iron. And we were lucked out, we are able to find a stainless pan that'll fit in there just nice. We can use that to catch all our juicy drippings and everything so uh, if we want to reuse those we got our gasket applied it worked out nice on this one is, is we put the uh, heat resistant gasket not only on the frame but we also put it on the door uh, the gasket that was on the door was a little thicker so we got a nice seal now when we close it so we're pretty much we're pretty much ready for and a then test in the back, fire let's see we've got the yeah i'll the show loop. you in the back we got our vent cut in there just a, like a regular floor register that you can adjust now, if, we've, if, if we're running it and we feel that we need to get the temperature down more, we can always add the additional fan here to blow a little air into the unit to get everything circulating. All right, looks good, man. All right. All right. There's our other one we built. <laughs> that one worked out really well. So this is uh, phase two. So yeah, you find a, a nice old refrigerator with a metal line on the inside. Uh, it's not too difficult to uh, to put these one put these together. So uh, we're gonna fire it up and see where how it holds the temperature. So we'll be back in a few minutes. We got some nice smoke coming out of there. Set for 225. It's just now creeping up there. So, okay, we've got this. Uh, we set it up to 375 now. Let's see where we're at here. Uh, yeah, 373, 372. So yeah, it's gonna. This is working good. I think uh, anybody that wants to build a, a smoker out of an old refrigerator using the Pellet Pro uh, hopper assembly with our PID controller. It's going to make a nice uh, smoker. I mean, you couldn't buy a, a smoker 
like this, uh, you, 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 you may spend three, four thousand dollars at some fancy smoker, pellet smoker, but this this system works really well. So it's a little bit of time in your garage, an old refrigerator, and you can make one too. So thanks for looking. Go start cooking.